quick topics for you, Tram, because I don't want right, to have batter. a lot of things that I want to cover yeah. with you that we, we've got to squeeze in. First of all, how can, how, what, what are some things that we can do to fix the problem? You've already covered some things, but what right. are some additional I, things? I think the number one thing that we need to do in this country is to restore trust and confidence in our financial system. And I believe that we're slowly being able to do that with some of the actions of the federal government to help shore up the banks. Uh, I think uh, consumers need to be more vigilant in terms of their financial uh, matters. Uh, I think we could make some changes uh, in accounting, maybe on a temporary basis, but I believe the mark-to-market rules that the SEC imposes on banks is detrimental to our recovery. This is where we have to reevaluate every day the assets of the bank down to market, and with rapidly falling property values. Oh. Uh, we are having to mark loans down to market. And where there is no market, I mean, is it zero or what have you? In the 1980s, the big deal in banking was the international loans, the um, loans to third world countries. Right. And banks were able over time to work out those problems. They did not have to mark those loans down to market. And I believe what our country needs uh, in terms of restoring this trust and confidence is time and changing our mark to market rules would be a big step toward that. Is Obama talking about doing that? Uh, unfortunately he's not. Uh, his new SEC chairman uh, is a woman and I am told that she is not in favor of doing that. What about the stimulus package? That's what's getting the most news that we're I injecting a Keynesian style, European style spending stimulus to jumpstart the economy. What do you think about it? I, you know, I, I don't think we can spend our way out of this recession. I think we need to make some fundamental changes uh, in terms of our tax structure. I don't know why we need to spend all this money on pork uh, to uh, get out of the recession. I think that, you know, if you take a couple items like the payroll tax, the FICA, if, if President Obama would come out and say, we're going to eliminate half of the payroll tax uh, down. That would put money in the pockets of working Americans. It would allow businesses who have to pay half of that a chance to recoup money and maybe keep people employed, whereas right now they're probably looking at ways of cutting uh, back. I think we could reduce the marginal tax rate from 25 percent down to 15 percent. That would cover probably 90 percent of the people in our country paying taxes. And it would give them a, a, almost a flat tax rate of 15 uh, percent. I, I believe that um, if, if we are able to make some changes like that, it really does not cost it any more. Americans will have more money to invest. Uh, and while we don't maybe temporarily suspend the capital gains tax, for five years. And I think you'd see uh, capital flood into the markets to uh, make investments and uh, create jobs because the government can't do it alone. Okay, I can't let you go without uh, come on this show without asking you a little bit about local politics. Sure. My prediction a couple weeks ago was that our next governor of Florida in two years is going to be Vern Buchanan. What do you think about about that prediction? Uh, I didn't know that Charlie Chris had made an announcement that he's not. <laughs> no, it's for my prediction. Your prediction. <laughs> he yeah. will run for the Senate. Yeah. And then Vern's going to run for governor. Yeah. That's what I think. I, I'm not sure. I, I think that, uh, you know, Vern clearly is probably more of an executive That's right. uh, type uh, person than a legislative uh, person. And uh, it would not uh, be something that would surprise me. What about you? Are you done with politics? Have you fully gotten it out of your uh, system? Like I said, I'm, I'm a recovering politician. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it takes a little while to do that. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's important that if we don't get good people to run and stand for office and serve in public office, we get the government we deserve. And, uh, you know, for that reason, I'm always going to be involved. I'm an active citizen. Great. Tran, thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Now it's time for everybody's favorite segment, the Weasel of the Week. And the weasel, I see the empty pocket needs a refill. I got a squad with a list of complainers. I should have started. Sarasota rape. County is number one in Florida for drug overdoses by, by prescription drug abuse. It is the drug of choice among our young people today. Unfortunately, in our county, we have a serious problem. 
And that problem is that kids today, by and large, are not abusing the drugs of their parents, marijuana, cocaine, heroin. What they are hooked on is prescription drugs. And that's why I call unethical pain management doctors the new drug traffickers of the 21st century. I have, in my profession, tried my best to get law enforcement to take a long, hard look at some of these pain management doctors rather than continuing to lock up the addicts that they get hooked on their drugs. So it was encouraging for me to see this week a lawsuit filed by the family of Michael Cherzanowski against Dr. Viren Gupta. Uh, apparently, according to the complaint, and he is our weasel of the week, Mr. Dr. Gupta prescribed 530 Oxycontins in 45 days, which led to the Cherzanowski overdose. If anybody's ever taken one Oxycontin, it would knock you on your butt for the rest of the day. That's, over, that's 11 Oxycontins per day prescribed by one doctor to this individual, apparently. Uh, this particular doctor's name is one that has come up in my profession as somebody who um, is perhaps doing some, uh, some things he shouldn't be doing over and over and over again over a long period of time. And I hope that not only this family, but law enforcement takes a long, hard look at his practice, uh, which is a, a pain management clinic on Bee Ridge Road. So Dr. Viren Gupta is our weasel of the week. Let's take a look at him and put him a little bit under the microscope. We'll see you next week on Clout 941. Let's go! Yeah!